This conference will now be recorded. Hare Krishna. Welcome back to our online Bhagavad Gita reading retreat labs. So in the last session we have started the chapter number three, that is our Karma Yoga of Bhagavad Gita. And we have covered the verse number one to verse number nine, where exactly we have discussed about Arjuna's confusion with the renunciation of what is good or what in action or what in devotion is better. So then again, we have seen uh, in the next verse number three to nine, we have seen this Kamil Karma Yoga, which is uh, better than better for Arjuna than Jnana Yoga. So in today's session, we will cover from verse number 10 to verse number 16. So it is a flow from Karma Kanda to Karma Yoga. So without any delay, let's uh, move to Vedabes. Verse number 10, chapter number 3, verse number 10. Translation. In the beginning of creation, the Lord of all creatures sent forth generations of man and demigods, along with sacrifices for Vishnu, and blessed them by saying, Be thou happy by this Yajna sacrifice, because its performance will bestow upon you everything desirable for living happily and achieving liberation. But what? The material creation by the Lord of creatures, Vishnu, in the chance offered to the conditioned souls to come back home, back to Godhead. All living entities within the material creation are conditioned by the material nature. Because of their forgetfulness of the relationship to Vishnu or Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Vedic principles are to help us understand this eternal relation as it is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Vedasya Sarvai Ahameva Vedya. The Lord says that the purpose of the Vedas is to understand Him. In the Vedic hymns, it is said, Patim Viswasyata Swaram. Therefore, the Lord of the living entities in the Supreme Personality of God and Vishnu. In the Srimad Bhagavad also 2.4.20 Srila Sukhadev Goswami describes the Lord is Pati in so many ways. Sriyaha Pati, Jagyam Pati, Prajapati, Bhiyam Pati, Loka Pati, Dhara Pati, Pati Gati Naka Vishni Satvatam Prasidatam Me Bhagavan the Prajapati is Lord Vishnu, and he is the Lord of all living creatures, all worlds, and all duties, and the protector of everyone. The Lord created this material world to enable the conditioned souls to learn how to perform yajna sacrifices for the satisfaction of Vishnu, so that while in the material world, they can live very comfortably without anxiety, and after finishing the present material body, they can enter into the kingdom of God. That is the whole program for the conditioned soul. By performance of Yajna, the conditioned souls gradually become Krishna consciousness and become godly in all respects. In the age of Kali, the Sankirtan Yajna, the chanting of the names of God, is recommended by the Vedic scriptures. And this transcendental system was introduced by Lord Chaitanya for the deliverance of all men in this age. Sankirtan Yajna and Krishna Consciousness go well together. Lord Krishna in his devotional form as Lord Chaitanya is mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam 11.5.32 as follows, with special reference to the Sankirtan Yajna. Krishna Varanam Vishakshnam Sangu Pamunasparam Prashadam Yajani Sankirtana Prayer Yajanti Isu Venasaha. In this age of Kadi, people who are endowed with sufficient intelligence will worship the Lord, who is accompanied by his associates by performance of Shankirtana Yajna. 
Uh, the Ryavgyans prescribed in the Vedic literatures are not easy to perform in this age of Kali, but the Sankirtan Yajna is easy and sublime for all purposes, as recommended in Bhagavad Gita also, 9.14. Now we will move to the next verse, that is chapter number 3, verse number 11. Translation, the demigods being pleased by sacrifices will also please you. And thus, by cooperation between men and demigods, prosperity will reign for all purport. The demigods are empowered administrators of material affairs. The supply of air, light, water, and all other benedictions for maintaining the body and soul of every living entity is entrusted to the demigods, who are innumerable assistants in different parts of the body of the Supreme Personality of God. Their places and displaces are dependent on the performance of yajnas by the human being. Some of the yajnas are meant to satisfy particular demigods, but even in so doing, Lord Vishnu is perceived in all yajnas as the chief beneficiary. It is stated also in the Bhagavad Gita that Krishna himself is the beneficiary of all kinds of yajnas. Bhoktaram yajnapasha. Therefore, ultimate satisfaction of the yajnapati is the chief purpose of all yajnas. When these yajnas are perfectly performed, naturally the demigods in charge of the different departments of supply are pleased, and there is no scarcity in the supply of natural products. Performance of yajnas has many side benefits, ultimately leading to liberation from material bondage. By performance of yajnas, all activities become purified, as it is stated in the Vedas. Ahara Sudha, Sattva Sudhi, Sattva Sudha, by performance of yajna, one it, one's eatables become sanctified, and by eating sanctified foodstuffs, one's very existence becomes purified. By the purification of existence, finite tissues in the memory become sanctified, and when memory is sanctified, one can think of the path of liberation. And all this combined together lead to Krishna consciousness, the great necessity of present day society. So, if we summarize the verse number 10 and verse number 11, we have seen here in this section attaining the happiness by sacrifice, that is yajna, and how we can cooperate between men and demigods. So now we will move to the next verse. Chapter number 3, verse number 12. Translation. In charge of the various necessities of life, the demigods being satisfied by the performance of your young sacrifice will supply all necessities to you. But he who enjoys such gifts without offering them to the demigods, in return, is certainly a thief. Purport. The demigods are authorized supplying agents on behalf of the Supreme Personality of God at Vishnu. Therefore, they must be satisfied by the performance of prescribed yajnas. In the Vedas, there are different kinds of yajnas prescribed for different kinds of demigods, but all are ultimately offered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. For one who cannot understand what the Personality of Godhead is, sacrifice to demigods is recommended. According to the different material qualities of the person concerned, different types of yajnas are recommended in the Vedas. Worship of different demigods is also on the same basis, namely, According to different qualities, for example, the meat eaters are recommended to worship the goddess Kali, the ghastly form of material nature, and before the goddess, the sacrifice of animals is recommended. But for those who are in the mode of goodness, the transcendental worship of Vishnu is recommended. 
but ultimately all ligands are meant for gradual promotion in a transcranial position for ordinary men at least five ligands no more than five maha ligands are necessary one should know however that all the necessities of life that the human society requires are supplied by the demigod essence of the law no one can manufacture anything take for example all the tables of human society these eight tables include grains fruits vegetables milk sugar etc for the purposes in the mode of goodness in also eight tables for the non vegetarians like meats none of which can be manufactured by man then again take for example heat light water air etc which are also necessities of life none of them can be manufactured by the human society without the supreme lord there can be no profuse sunlight moonlight rainfall breeze etc without which no one can live obviously our life is dependent on supplies from the lord even for our manufacturing enterprises we require so many raw materials like metal sulfur mercury manganese and so many essentials all of which are supplied by the essence of the laws with the purpose that we should make proper use of them to keep ourselves fit and healthy for the purpose of self realization leading to the ultimate goal of life namely liberation from the material struggle for existence this aim of life is attained by performance of yajnas if you forget the purpose of human life and simply take supplies from the essence of the lord for self gratification and become more and more entangled in material existence which is not the purpose of creation suddenly we become thieves and therefore we are punished by the laws of material nature a society of thieves can never be happy because they have no aim in life the gross materialists thieves have no ultimate goal of life they are simply directed to sense gratification nor do they have knowledge of how to perform yajnas no chaitanya however inaugurated the pg's performance of yajna namely the sankirtan yajna which can be performed by anyone in the world who accepts the principles of krishna consciousness now we move to the next verse that is chapter number 3 verse number 13 translation the devotees of the lord are released from all kinds of sins because they eat food which is offered fast for sacrifice others who prepare food for personal sense enjoyment verily it only sin but what the devotees of the supreme lord or the persons who are in krishna consciousness are called sanghas and they are always in love with the lord as it is described in the Brahma Sanghita 5.38. Premanjana Chulita Bhakti Vilochina Sanghita Sadi Harudeshu Vilokayam. The Sanghas being always in a compact of love with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Govinda, the giver of all pleasures, or Mukunda, the giver of liberation, or Krishna, the all attractive person, cannot accept anything without first offering it to the Supreme Person. Therefore, such devotees always offer yajnas in different modes of devotional service, such as sravanam, kirtanam, smaranam, archanam, etc. And these performances of yajnas keep them always aloof from all kinds of contamination or sinful association in the material world. Others who prepare food for self or sense gratification are not only thieves but also the eaters of all kinds of sins how can a person be happy if he is both a thief and sinful it is not possible therefore in order for people to become happy in all respects they must be taught to perform the easy process of sankirtana like yeah in full krishna consciousness otherwise 
there can be no peace or happiness in the world. Now we will move to the next verse, that is chapter number 3, verse number 14. Translation, all living bodies subsist on food grains, which are produced from rains. Rains are produced by performance of yajna, sacrifice, and yajna is born of prestive duties. But for Srila Baladar Vita Bhushan, a great commentator on the Bhagavad Gita, writes as follows. Here in Radhi, Andhra Yajyam, Sarveshuram Vishnu, Chyakrishtasesham, Asanti Tenata Deha Yatram, Sampadyanti, Te Santa Sarveshya Yajyam, Usasya Bhakta Sarva Kivai, Anadi Kala Vibhutavi, Atman Vava, Pratibandha Kshai, Kilai, Apai, Papai Vibhutchante. The Supreme Lord, who is known as the Jakya Purusha, or the personal beneficiary of all sacrifices, is the master of all the devil gods. To serve him as the different limbs of the body, serve the whole. Demigods like Indra, Chandra, and Varuna are appointed officers who manage material affairs, and the Vedas direct sacrifices to satisfy these demigods so that they may be pleased to supply air, light, and water sufficiently to produce food grains. When Lord Krishna is worshipped, the demigods, who are different limbs of the Lord, are also automatically worshipped. Therefore, there is no separate need to worship the demigods. For this reason, the devotees of the Lord, who are in Krishna consciousness, offer food to Krishna and then eat, a process which nourishes the body spiritually. But such action not only are past sinful reactions in the body vanquished, but the body becomes immunized to all contamination of material nature. When there is an epidemic disease, an antiseptic vaccine protects a person from the attack of such an epidemic. So we have related to current ongoing corona. So people are still waiting for vaccination. Similarly, food offered to Lord Vishnu and then taken by us makes a sufficient resistance to material affection. And one who is accustomed to this practice is called a devotee of the Lord. Therefore, a person in Krishna consciousness who eats only food offered to Krishna can counteract all reactions of past material infections, which are impediments to the progress of self realization. On the other hand, one who doesn't do so continues to increase the volume of sinful reaction, and this prepares the next body to resemble hogs and dogs to suffer the resultant reactions of all sins. The material world is full of contaminations, and one who is immunized by accepting prashadam of the Lord, who offered to Vishnu, is safe from the attack. Whereas one who doesn't do so becomes subjected to contamination. Food grains or vegetables are factually eatable. The human beast eats different kinds of food grains, vegetables, fruits, etc. And the animals eat the refuse of food grains and vegetables, grass, plants, etc. Human beings who are accustomed to Eating meat and flesh must also depend on the production of vegetation in order to eat the animals. Therefore, ultimately, we have to depend on the production of the field and not on the production of the factories. The field production is due to sufficient rain from the sky, and such rains are controlled by demigods like Indra, Sun, Moon, etc. They are all servants of the Lord. The Lord can be satisfied by sacrifices. Therefore, one who cannot perform them will find himself in scarcity. That is a law of nature, yajna. Specifically, the Sankirtana yajna prescribed for this age must therefore be performed to save us at least from scarcity of food supply.
now we will move to the next verse chapter number 3 verse number 15 translation regulated activities are prescribed in the vedas and the vedas are directly manifested from the personality of godhead consequently the all pervading transcendence is eternally situated in acts of sacrifice purport yagan yagnarth karma yagnarth karma or the necessity of work for the satisfaction of krishna only is more expressly stated in this verse if we have to work for the satisfaction of the yagya purusha vishnu then we must find out the direction of work in brahman or the transcendental vedas the vedas are therefore also working directions anything performed without the direction of the vedas is called vikarma or unauthorized or sinful work therefore one should always take direction from the vedas to be saved from the reaction of war as one has to work in ordinary life by the direction of the state one similarly has to work under direction of the supreme state of the lord such directions in the vedas are directly manifested from the breathing of the supreme personality of god it is said asya mahatvadashya nishvashitam ekadya rigveda yajurveda samaveda sankira sa the four vedas namely the rigveda yajurveda samaveda and atharveda are all emanations from the breathing of the great personality of god Brihad Aranya ke Upanishad 4.5.11. The Lord being omnipotent can speak by breathing air, or as it is confirmed in the Brahma Sanghita, the Lord has the omnipotence to offer to each of his senses the actions of all of the senses. In other words, the Lord can speak through his breathing and he can impregnate by his eyes. In fact, is said that he glanced at the nature and thus father all living entities after creating or impregnating the conditioned souls into the womb of material nature he gave his directions in the vedic wisdom as to how such conditioned souls can return home back to god we should always remember that the conditioned souls in material nature are all eager for material enjoyment but the Vedic directions are so mad that one can satisfy one's perverted desires, then return to Godhead, having finished his so called enjoyment. It is a chance for the conditioned souls to attain liberation. Therefore, the conditioned souls must try to follow the process of their care by becoming Krishna conscious. Even those who have not followed the Vedic injunctions may adopt the principles of Krishna consciousness. And that will take the place of performance of Vedic Yajnas or Karmas. Now we will move to the next verse. Chapter number 3, verse number 16. Translation. My dear Arjuna, one who doesn't follow in human life the cycle of sacrifice thus established by the Vedas certainly leads a life full of sin, living only for the satisfaction of the senses. Such a person lives in vain. The Mammonist philosophy of one very hard and enjoy sense gratification is condemned herein by the law. Therefore, for those who want to enjoy this material world, the ego mentioned cycle of media chaos is absolutely necessary. One who doesn't follow such regulations is living a very risky life, being condemned more and more. By nature's law, this human form of life is specifically meant for self-realization in either of the three ways, namely karma yoga, Jnana Yoga or Bhakti Yoga. There is no necessity of precisely following the performance of the prescribed Yajnas for the transcendentalist who are ego, vice, and virtue. But those who are engaged in sense gratification require 
purification by the above mentioned cycle of radium performances. There are different kinds of activities. Those who are not Krishna conscious are certainly engaged in sensory consciousness. Therefore, they need to execute pious work. The yajna system is planned in such a way that sensory conscious persons may satisfy their desires without becoming entangled in the reaction of sense gratification work. The prosperity of the world depends not on our own efforts, but on the background arrangement of the Supreme Lord directly carried out by the demigods. Therefore, the yajnas are directly aimed at the particular demigods mentioned in the Vedas. Indirectly, it is the practice of Krishna consciousness because when one masters the performance of yajnas, one is sure to become Krishna conscious. But if by performing yajnas, one doesn't become Krishna conscious, such principles are counted as only moral goals. One should not therefore limit his progress only to the point of moral goals, but should transcend them to attain Krishna consciousness. So with this, we completed this section. We will go back to our mind map. So we have seen in this particular section number 10 to 16, basically, Right. The cycle of sacrifice, the verse number 14 to 16, we have seen how life becomes sinful without the sacrifice. And also in the verse number 12 to 13, we have seen one soup eat food which is first offered in sacrifice, otherwise, you will be born with thief. So, with this, we will stop here and in the next session we will start from verse number 17 to verse number 35. So where we will be seeing the, the Niskama Karma Yoga to set the right example. Hare Krishna.